and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Well, hi there, folks. I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today, we're going to talk about hamstring strain slash pain will never go away unless you do this. And we're <laughs> warning you. Listen to us once. Well, exactly, Bob. This is one of those things that a uh, little pearl that can help you big time if you have that continuous hamstring issues. Sure. By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on the stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Mike, what are we on here? Do you know what we're giving away? We're on Saturday, so this is the in between day. Oh. But normally, you go to bobandbrad.com, go to the giveaway section. We're giving something away, like we're going to be giving um, something away next week. We don't know what, though. I think it's a booyah stick. Oh, good. So check it out Sunday. It'll be there. It'll also be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. If you go to the top of the page, it'll be pinned to the top of the page, the contest that is. Go to Twitter, Instagram, TikTok if you want a 60-second version of our program. This is a big problem for a lot of people, hamstring problems. Well, hamstrings, as far as people that are active, is a very commonly injured muscle. I pulled my hamstring. It cramps up a lot. Uh, you know, from... And it's one way or another, it's painful. And it's one of these things that how do you deal with it? If it's You've a, got it. My wife's got it. She's, it's an ongoing issue with her. We have right. to, um, um, and we'll talk about some things she's done too. Sure. Okay. So, uh, so what's the issue? You know, you think, well, if you injure your hamstrings, we've got to stretch it. Well, I'm telling you, stretching may be a good thing to do to it, but it's not going to fix the problem. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you strain your hamstring and you start stretching it, right after you strain it, you can actually make it worse. Uh, so there's a time for stretching and a time not for stretching. Is yours a high hamstring, Brad, up, up near the no. buttock, or it's more in the middle? Mid. Okay. Mid. I've those had, are easier to treat generally. Sure. I've had the higher one right up at the initial tuberosity. Sure. Uh, but we better keep going. Yes. Yeah, keep on track here, Bob. We'll get off on a tangent. Uh, so one thing, if you are having um, – Hamstring. Now, if you have a tear in your hamstring, which right. really serious, that's it. We're not talking about that. Right. We're talking about the nagging hamstring where it makes you limp, but you're still functional, but you know you're not going to sprint. Right. Uh, you know you're not going to be hiking up and down, uh, you know, rough terrain, that kind of thing. It'll fire uh, up on you. Exactly. So what do you do if you don't stretch it? What we need to do is actually strengthen... The glutes. The glutes. Yeah. The reason the hamstrings are becoming injured uh, chronically or all the time is because these muscles are not doing their job forcing the hamstring to overwork. Yeah, it's they, becoming the dominating muscle right. in the hamstring, and it's working too hard. Right. And so you got to get those glutes in there to help. They right. Gotta, the, the glutes, come on in. So we need to strengthen the glutes, and there's some good exercises to strengthen the glutes, but it even gets a little more complicated. Yes, it does. The glutes may now, may never strengthen if you have tight hip flexors, the yeah. opposite muscle group, which a lot of people, if you spend a lot of time sitting at your job in your car, yeah. those hip flexors can get tight. And when they get tight, there's something called reciprocal inhibition or what's the other term? Crossed. A uh, lower extremity cross syndrome. Right. Well, um, if you're a therapist or uh, you're, you're really heavy into athletics, you may not understand some of this stuff. But right, it's a neurological thing that if the hip flexors are tight, neurologically they will not allow the glute muscles to work to their full maximum. Exactly. Yeah, they're just not not firing like they should. It's rather interesting, but we've interesting. got hamstring problems tie into the hip, the hip flexors. Right. And the same, you have some upper body situations too, but we won't go into those. Right. So, so we first need to adjust your hip flexors. Uh, should we show the one? Uh, sure. See how they're, so they're tight? So we need to stretch those tight hip flexors. Right. Very important. This is the one I do every morning. I just put down, I would see which knee do you want me to want forward, Brad? Like this? Yeah. Yeah. We're going right. to. So I'm stretching this hip flexor. And what I do is I lean forward here and I keep good posture and I actually take my hand and I push it on my pelvis a little bit, Brad. Yep. So, so a little bit more right here, that muscle right in that front pocket area, that hip flexor is really getting a nice stretch there. Notice it's a nice upward posture. Now, if you want to stretch it a little bit more even, you turn your foot out that way. Yep. And I lean forward and it puts just a little more stress on that hip flexor muscle's 
if you were doing this one, you would turn it out that way. Right. And lean forward like that. Sure. So that's just a simple way to do it. Do you want me to show one on the mat too, Brad? Sure. So on the mat, if you have... You could do this on your bed if you got right. a, a firm bed. First off, don't fall off the bed. Right. You're going to bring your legs over to the edge like this. And I'm going to stretch this one. So this one goes down to the floor. This is the problem. Like if you're tall like me and the mattress is kind of low to the ground, yeah. I'll be hitting the ground and it'll be a problem. Yeah. But you lock the pelvis this way. Yep. And then you let this, you can actually bend the knee a little bit and it'll stretch it a little bit into the quadricep too. Right. Get that rectus femoris. This is just a passive way to stretch that muscle. Yeah, Bob, it's driving me nuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah relax there a little bit. There we go. There. And it's just, it's a comfortable way to do it when you wake up in the morning to give a little bit of a stretch uh, of the hip flexor there before you even get out of bed. And make sure you do both legs so you right. kind of have to use the other side of the bed. Stay on there once, Bob. We also sure. now just started the positional uh, release. Oh, sure. Which is yeah. actually really nice on the bed. So want to put your leg back on there? Yeah. And Bob was just experienced this last week for the first time. Yeah, so you bring your hip up, right? So we're, we're relaxing and releasing the hip flexor. On the right leg. So I bring it up. And and I, his I, other leg is going to be in a hook line position, so he's got his yeah. knee up. Now I feel pain right there, Brad. Mm -hmm. So then you had me bring it out a little bit, right, or in? Yep, so you move the knee or the foot. You can think about bringing the foot, foot in. in this way. So once I've been in this position for 90 seconds, Brad, so I found the, the spot that works. The position of the most comfort, depending on where you put your knee and maybe a little rotation, it feels good, it's relaxed. 90 seconds, look at a clock, timer, whatever you have. Then you can slowly relax uh, and put it down. There you go. And you can, can even do a little bit of motion yep, back and A little and range forth. of motion, you know, slowly just making it, you know, feel good and relaxed. Allowing that circulation to continue to let and that muscle slowly relax. bring it down. There you go. So the muscle stay is calmed down and it stays calmed down. With and through like, the transition, get right. up, walk around a little bit. Um, so now we've taken care of the hip flexor. We've we've stretched it, we've calmed it down. Mm -hmm. Now we need to start strengthening the glutes. Right. So that they can kick in and do right. their job. Just to review. You can either stretch it if that works. You don't have to do the positional re sure. release. If the release works better, you don't have to stretch. Do what makes it feel the or best. Or do both. Or both, exactly. Yeah. Now, the strengthening is probably a little more simple. I'm going to take the pillow out for strengthening. I don't like it for this. Um, glutes, we're going to do a bridge. So I'm in the hook line position, exactly how I'm in now. Not on a bed. Much better on a firm carpeted floor. Um, and I'm going to go up and think about squeezing those butt cheeks together. Up and squeeze and relax. And we're going to do 10 to 15 of these. Now, if this is too easy and you want more uh, effort, you can take some weight. You know, if you want to have a dumbbell, a plate, sure. put it on your waist right here. I don't have one handy. But the other option you can do if you don't have one is simply go to the one-legged. The only thing that you do have to be careful about, some people will get a hamstring cramp right. doing this. If you feel the hamstring cramp, stretch it out, straighten those legs out, and, and sit up. You might vary where you put your foot, too, because sometimes, like, my hamstrings tend to cramp more here yep. than it, they do here. Right. So Actually, what I, I like to do better, and this, is, and this is the way I do them, you want to grab the black stool, yep. Bob. I actually use my physio ball or the exercise ball, and I put it, under my feet, but you can use a stool. It works just as fine. And now I'm going to have, I don't do it on a table like this. Right. <laughs> I do it straight. Um, can you go that way a little bit, Bob? Yep. There you go. With your legs straight, you won't have the hamstring cramp issue. And you get a better squeeze on your butt, too. Wow, that's a good I, idea. I think this idea, is Brad. better. And then I palpate my abdominal muscles and I tighten them up so I'm getting core and glutes. It's a double win situation. And I'll do 10 to 15 of these in coordination with some of my other exercises. Oh, well, that's a good idea, Brad. Yeah. I just learned something new today. Yeah, it's fun. It's always a great day. When I'd... <laughs> so you were, we were going to mention another option. I was going to show oh, this sure. one where you can actually get in the quadruped position. Oh, yeah, the old quadruped. You're going to bring your leg up like this into a 90, which puts the hamstring up more on slack. Right. And now I can just raise the heel toward the sky. And that's versus if you put your legs straight, 
It works a butt, but your yeah. hamstrings are involved. So They're if you kicking keep, in, right. Yep, if you keep the knee bent, it isolates the glutes better. And again, squeeze that buttock. Yeah. You know, I could actually that, that this does start to burn, Brad. Um, you could do this with a band, right? Too around your, your the legs. Yep, around the knees. You've got a little loop band. You could put it just above the knees or below, whatever works better to give you some more resistance. And that'll work the abductor a little bit too. Ten to fifteen reps. Two or three sets, depending on how ambitious you want to be. Um, One thing that helped my wife, too, with, with her running is we did have her start working on more of a uh, not as long a stride. Sure. She started yep. shorter strides, more, you know, turnover quickly. Is she a four-foot runner? Or it, she became a four-foot runner. Sure. Which helped, too. Yeah. You know, yep. she, she took shorter strides, so it's not – she wasn't doing that where she was hitting the heel and had a, a really lengthened stride, which really put a lot of sure. stress on the hamstring. Yep. So even with walking, if you're a walker and you're getting hamstring pain, try taking a little bit shorter strides yep. and see if that helps calm those hamstrings down. Sure. So it's it's sometimes that repetitive nature of, of just, you know, with like walking or running fires those hamstrings up. So It's kind of a, Bad situation. It's a mystery, isn't it? A little bit. This, it never uh, happened to me until I got in my fifties. I I could do anything I wanted. Before. I did know so because it is on your left side right now. You said yeah. you had it on your right side. I thought your hip flexor was tighter on yeah, your, on your yeah, left side. Yeah, I so. think you're. I think you're right there. You gotta listen to your own medicine here. I you know, know, Bob. Take, take your own medicine. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm a little stubborn. You know, I'm a little German. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>